I'd like to call this joint meeting of the Rec and Ed and Ways and Means Committee to order. The purpose of the joint meeting is to hold a public hearing for the 2014-2015 operating budget for Monroe Community College. We will then proceed with the agenda items that have been assigned to both Rec, Rec and Ed and Ways and Means. When the Rec and Ed Committee's items are finished, that committee will adjourn and we will complete the remainder of the Ways and Means Committee agenda. Committee. Dr. Carbone. Here. Vice Chairman Gamina. Mr. Gamble is excused. Ms. Rivera is excused. Chairwoman Valerio. Here. Will the clerk please call a roll for the Ways and Means Committee? Ms. Andrews is excused. Mr. Baroff. Here. Dr. Carbone. Here. Mr. Danielli. Here. Mrs. Draw. Here. Mr. Haney. Here. Ms. Cayley. Here. Dr. Quattro. Mr. Rocco, Here. Mr. Tucciarello, Here. Chairman Yolovich. Here. Legislator Danielli, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you very much. Let me first express my appreciation to the chairs and to the members of both committees as well as to the legislature as a whole. Monroe County has consistently and strongly supported Monroe Community College and this support has made a meaningful difference in our community and in our college. It has enabled MCC to establish itself as a leader both within the state and within the nation. And that reputation has grown year after year. Recently, MCC has been lauded by such diverse sources as the, the Vice President Biden, Governor Cuomo, the American Association of Community Colleges, Danny Wegman, Fortune Magazine, and even the Aspen Institute for our innovative programs that link directly academic programs to career pathways. Our graduates have the opportunity to transfer to every single Rochester area college, every single state university of New York campus, as well as to institutions such as Cornell and Columbia and Yale and Amherst and University of Michigan, MIT, even Boston College. That's important because the support that you give us each year in our annual budget makes that happen. You have also funded our capital projects, which allow our students to learn in state-of-the-art learning environments, on state-of-the-art campuses, to prepare, prepare them to be 21st century learners and 21st century workers. Our community benefits because of that. Monroe County's partnership with MCC improves the lives of county residents and strengthens the economy of our region. And for that, we thank you. In the budget that I will present tonight, MCC continues its history of fiscal stability, institutional efficiency, and systemic innovation during a time of great change and disruption in higher education. In so doing, we wish to send a clear message to our community. We understand our responsibility to provide Monroe County residents with access to high quality, higher education, while also keeping our eyes on the cost of that experience. At a time when post-secondary education has never been more important, we also recognize that too many families, too many individuals see higher education as being out of reach. We recognize our role, and that role in this community is to keep the door of access open and affordable to provide meaningful and relevant learning opportunities and to define clear pathways for student success at our college and beyond. The budget that I will talk with you about represents the efforts of many at the college, and it reflects our continued commitment to excellence and fiscal responsibility. 
MCC has historically outperformed SUNY's community colleges in its cost per FTE, so it may not come as a surprise to you that the same is true this year as well. MCC's cost per FTE of instruction is in fact 12% below the SUNY average. As a result, taxpayers in Monroe County will see an 8% return on their investment in MCC, and our college will add close to $103 million in net income to the county. And then non-local students coming to MCC will add an additional $5.1 million in spending. The cumulative impact of MCC's alumni to the regional economy is significant. And it's $602.4 million a year. Why such a large impact? Well, the answer is simple. An MCC education pays for our students. For every dollar that they invest in tuition at MCC, they will see a return of $8.30. That's over 18% in terms of return on investment. For some, this return is even greater. For the past few years, we've been very consistent in messaging the importance of career pathways and career and technical education and middle skills to our region. Now we have some data around that that tells students exactly what they will earn when they learn in those programs. Keep in mind that an average associate's degree will earn its holder over their lifetime about a half a million dollars, $500,000. But our career and technical education grads do much better. For example, graduates in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning will see their lifetime earnings increase by almost $800,000. For those in automotive tech, it's $750,000. In tooling and machining, it's almost $700,000. The average increase in earnings for someone holding a four-year degree is a million dollars over a lifetime. So if you think about the investment that these students in these programs are getting for a two-year degree, it really is remarkable. And this return also accrues to the county. In 2013, the average annual impact per completer just for the three programs that I've mentioned to you is over $18,000 per graduate per year. Our partnership is making a difference. Students in these programs this year will see their tuition increase to a proposed $3,416 for a full-time student for a full year at MCC. This reflects an increase of $176 per full-time student for that full year, or about an average $6 for each credit hour for most full-time students. MCC's tuition remains the second lowest within the State University of New York, and that's among the 30 SUNY community colleges. And in fact, when you look at those community colleges, over 90% of them have over uh, a tuition of over $3,500 a year, and over 60% of them have tuitions at this point over $4,000 a year, putting our $3,416 in quite some context. We are also the most affordable regional community college with a tuition far below that of FLCC or GCC. When we look at our tuition, we also recognize it's very important around access to make sure that students can come to MCC and it's still an affordable experience. And we do know at a tuition of $3,416 that covering that tuition, any required fees, and their books will put them well within the limits of their Pell Grant and TAP aid. And in fact, MCC's tuition is just two-thirds of a student's maximum TAP, which is, again, among the lowest of the SUNY community colleges. Going into the next year, we anticipate that regional demogra demographics around declining high school populations have the potential to impact enrollment and corresponding revenues. Community college enrollment is typically countercyclical to the economy, and so declining enrollments within SUNY's community colleges currently give proof to that maxim. But we also see that our continued linkages between some of our academic programs and the industries that they're serving are leading to increased completions and increased placements. So in part, we're seeing more students move, move more quickly through MCC into work, which is a good outcome for everyone. But as a result of these factors, we're projecting that our year-on-year year year enrollment will decline by 6%. Both the increase in tuition and the decline in enrollment have been um, built into our budget. Our budget also reflects a state aid increase of $75 per full-time equivalent student. That New York continues to restore community college base aid is good news. However, this year they did slow the pace of that restoration, which will impact our budget. 
the enacted state aid increase will achieve a level of $2,497 per full-time equivalent in terms of their support, but that compares unfavorably to the high from 2009 of $2,675. As a result, state aid as a percent of our budget is at about 31.2% as compared to the state's um, requirement, which is waived every year, of 40%. The budget that we propose this year includes flat year-on-year -year funding from the county. That's in recognition of the 2% property tax cap, which continues to impact the county and its ability to meet the needs of all of its agencies. But we also understand and greatly appreciate the support the county has given us through the years on projects such as the new downtown campus. Driven by these revenue variables, coupled with a fo focus on fiscal restraint, MCC's proposed overall budget for 2014-2015 is $126.9 million, and our proposed net budget will be $119.4 million. That net budget re represents a year-on-year -year increase of just 1.4%, even though expenses associated with labor and benefits will grow year-on-year -year by far over 2%. MCC's ability to limit the impact of these increases on our budget demonstrates the college's commitment to cost containment, fiscal responsibility, and efficient stewardship of the investment of the county and local taxpayers. Significantly, we work to assure that financial efficiency does not impact institutional effectiveness. MCC places learning first among our strategic objectives and creates a dynamic and engaging college culture for our students that champions excellence as a core value. The college remains among the top associate degree producers in the country. We have grown the number and the depth of our industry partnerships and our university transfer partnerships, and we consistently place a priority on allocating institutional resources where they are needed most, and that is to support the inspiring faculty and staff who carry out our mission each day. As I conclude this, which is actually my sixth budget presentation, it's hard to believe, um, to the legislature, uh, please accept my appreciation and MCC's appreciation for your support of Monroe Community College. I look forward to responding to any questions when the time is appropriate and to a continuation of our long-standing partnership in service of the prosperity of our shared community. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hold a public hearing on the approval of Monroe Co Community College's 2014-2015 operating budget. Affidavits of publication and posting of the notice of the hearing in the Daily Record and Rochester Business Journal have been received and are on file in the clerk's office. Madam Clerk, is there anyone signed up to speak in regards to the public hearing on the MCC budget? There is not. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in re with regard to the MCC budget. There being none, I declare the public hearing closed. Move on to the public forum. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any speakers signed up for the public forum? There are not. Is there anyone in the audience not signed up that would like to speak to this committee? Hearing none, I declare the public forum closed. Members of the <coughs> Members of the Ways and Means Committee, you have the minutes from the June 25th, 2014 meeting. They will stand approved as submitted unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. Item to be considered by both committees. Referral 14-0237, approval of Monroe Community Colleges 2014-2015. Okay, moved by Madam Clerk and seconded.
Ways and Means Committee. The item is moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Tuturello. Uh, for the Ways and Means Committee, at this time, is there any questions from the members of the Ways and Means Committee? Legislator Haney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have just four questions for, um, for the, the President. Probably would be easier if you stood at the podium rather than trying to sit at the table over there. The first question, Mr. President, through the chair. Um, the charges to other counties uh, has gone up by 519,000 between the first version of the budget that we received and, and this version. How is that possible? Sure. Through the chair, um, we had set the <coughs> chargeback rate, which is what it's called when we charge other counties for their students attending MCC. Um, we had set that based on what we anticipated and had been led through the majority of the legislative session to believe would be new chargeback legislation that had been agreed to by SUNY and the Association of Counties and was being advanced. Um, very late in the day, they changed the legislation um, and extended the current chargeback formula, if you will, by another two years. They can revisit it again next session and can potentially come up with a new chargeback formula. We did not anticipate that. Um, I can say that my chief financial officer sits as the president of all of the community college business officers and they thought that this matter was a closed deal. Um, when that reopened, it allowed us to go back to our old chargeback formula, which was the one you saw last year, and so that's what we did with the budget. Was, was this state action done at the time the budget was adopted, or, or, or was this subsequent to, to the budget? It was very late in the session. Um, oh, so, so, I'm so it was independent of the budget then? Correct. Okay, Correct. thank you. The third question I have is your enrollment chart on page XIX um, shows that in the last four or five years, the enrollment has dropped by 2,843 from a peak of 16,643 in 2010-11 to an anticipated 13,8 next year. Mm -hmm which is about 4.3% per year. And I, I realize that you're running into the headwinds of demographics mm -hmm. with uh, the numbers of uh, young people in this age cohort have been mm -hmm. steadily de declining. But as the numbers decline, I mean, that sort of forces the cost per student to increase. Where do you anticipate that this will go in, in the future? Should, should we be expecting a continued decline of that type? Or mm -hmm. do you see it ending or flattening? Or what, what do you see happening? Sure, and uh, actually through the chair, thank you for calling out this chart because I'd like to point out something for everybody. You know, there's only so much we can put in a chart and make it look readable. And what I would ask you to do is to think about MCC's enrollment going forward sort of from the 14.8 to the 13.8 and sort of leveling out somewhere in, I would say, between 13,000 and 14,000. There's a precipitous drop in here between um, 2011, 2012, 2012, 2013. And that occurred because of a significant change in college policy and practice. Um, the college, uh, unbeknownst to me, had engaged in a practice prior to that where students were not dropped for non-payment. And so what that meant was we had students sitting in the classroom at the beginning of the year um, who had not paid for their classes and quite frankly couldn't really demonstrate that they had any discernible means to pay for those courses. Um, it looked really great at the beginning of the year for the FTE, but it wasn't so great at the end of the year when those students weren't there and we had classes that um, were quite smaller than we had anticipated they would be. We put in a new policy between 2011 and 2012 that we call the drop for non-payment policy, which requires that students demonstrate an ability to pay. It could be through the payment plan we have. It could be that their aid is coming in late. 
there's lots of different qualifications, but if they can demonstrate no reasonable ability to pay, we don't keep them in their classes anymore. So the big drop between 2011 and 2012, that's what's causing that huge decline. So I would say when you look at the headwinds going forward, we have different strategies that we're looking at to sort of sustain enrollment at a certain level, but I doubt that you will see enrollments um, in any reasonable time approaching what we saw in 2010, 2011, not just at MCC, but at any community college. Do you think it will continue to, to decline? I don't think it will continue to decline, but I think we're gonna hit sort of a reasonable settling point. Um, and when you talk about the cost per student, what I would suggest is that we also look very closely at how we're staffed based on enrollment. So for example, our faculty association contract has an index mechanism in it that allows us to adjust the number of faculty based on enrollment. So it's not just about when enrollment falls, we increase the cost to students, but we need to maintain our own cost levels as well. And my final question, um, what what are the carrying costs of the Kodak site that are in, in this budget roughly? Do, do you know offhand? You may, you may not. Yes, to the chair. We are carrying about $800,000 in this year's, this upcoming year budget for the uh, Kodak site. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Legislator Barat. To the chair. Um, I just have one follow-up <laughs> question regarding the uh, decline in FTE enrollment from 2011-12 to 2012-13. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that uh, much of it was due to the um, change in policy. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much of it was due to the change in policy? Through the chair, we're actually going back to look at that number right now. I don't have it for you immediately, but I think you can sort of get a sense of where a more reasonable enrollment decline might be when you look at the average that occurs between 2012 and 2014, okay. say, okay. and you're looking at an average that's, what, like around 500 FTE maybe, um, as opposed to the dramatic decline that you see there. Thank you, through the chair, that would be my expectation as mm -hmm. well, just that you were the expert yeah. on this, thank you. Any further discussion? Legislator Haney. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to say that, and I'm sure uh, I speak on behalf of all the legislators here, that we're extremely proud of the um, of Monroe Community College. It's one of the finest attributes uh, of our county government. We owe a deep debt to Gordon Howe and other pioneers who many years ago had the foresight uh, to create Monroe Community College. And um, it's my pleasure to join in my colleagues in voting to support the MCC budget. Can we get a ditto from up here too, Paul? <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. The next item on the agenda pertains to only the Recreation and Education Committee, Madam Clerk. Referral 14-0236. Moved by Mr. Bermino, seconded by Dr. Carbone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's with me today. Um, at this time, are there any questions from the members of the Recreation and Education Committee regarding this referral? Okay, if there are no further questions, we will move to a vote. All those in favor from the Recreation and Education Committee signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Item carries. Are there any other matters to come before the Recreation and Education Committee? Okay, there being no other matters, the July 30th, 2014 meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee is scheduled for Tuesday, August 19th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. We'll give you about uh, 30 seconds to switch.
Okay, legal counsel is here so we can continue with the rest of the Ways and Means Committee meeting. Uh, at this, this time, we have a presentation from uh, Mr. Pat Lightgeb, and who is a partner at KPMG, and uh, Mrs. Barbara Loveland, who is the senior manager of the firm. You folks can come forward and uh, give your report, please. I'm here happy to present the required communications relating to KPMG's audit. And there's several items that we'll cover and cover them uh, fairly quickly. Uh, firstly, our responsibilities under professional standards is to express an opinion that the financial statements prepared by management are presented fairly and conform with US generally accepted accounting principles. Also to perform the audit in accordance with professional standards both AICPA standards and governmental auditing standards. We also plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free of material misstatement, whether caused by error or fraud. We have no responsibility to detect non-material errors in the financial statements. Our responsibilities as it relates to internal control, we consider internal control over financial reporting as a basis to design our audit procedures we do not render an opinion on the effectiveness of internal controls. We also have a responsibility to communicate to the county legislature significant matters related to the financial statement audit that are relevant. And lastly, as a result of the financial statement audit, we did not identify any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. As it relates to the status of the 2013 audits, we have issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements. We are in the process of completing the single audit over compliance with federal programs and expect to issue that report by the September 30 deadline. And lastly, we will issue our letter of communications to those charged with governance, which will formalize these required communications once we complete the single audit. The next item to communicate relates to significant accounting policies. The significant accounting policies used by the county are described in note one to the basic financial statements. And the application of these existing policies was not changed at all during 2013. The county adopted government uh, accounting standards board number 65 in 2013. The title of that standard is items previously reported as assets and liabilities. This statement established accounting and financial reporting standards that reclassify as deferred outflows of resources or deferred inflows of resources certain items that were previously recorded and reported as assets and liabilities and further recognizes as outflows of resources or inflows of resources certain items that were previously reported as assets and liabilities. The effect of implementing this new standard resulted in a decrease in beginning net position of approximately $8.9 million. Further, as it relates to significant accounting policies, they are consistent and compliant with requirements, and they are also consistent with the application and disclosure of similar governments of your size and complexity. Unusual, traction, uh, un unusual transactions, there were no unusual transactions during 2013. The next item uh, is on management judgments and accounting estimates. The preparation of the basic financial statements requires management of the county to make a number of estimates and assumptions relating to the reported amounts of assets and liabilities and the disclosure of contingent assets and liabilities at the date of the basic financial statements and the reported amounts of revenues and expenses during the period. The most significant estimates included within the county's basic financial statements relate to the reserve for uncollectible property taxes, workers' compensation, and post-employment benefits other than pensions. The next item to communicate relates to audit adjustments. We identified no material audit adjustments that were recorded by management. In connection with our audit, we did identify a few audit differences that have not been corrected. And we have reported such misstatements to management and have received written representations from management that they believe the effects of these audit differences are immaterial, both individually and in the aggregate to the basic financial statements taken as a whole and we concur with that conclusion. 
Finally, uh, some other matters uh, that are required to report. Disagreements with management, there were none. Management's consultation with other accountants, there were none that we are aware of. Significant issues discussed or subject to correspondence with management. The only items that we had uh, from a correspondence perspective were the typical communications, an engagement letter and a management representation letter. And nothing as it relates to this correspondence or issues discussed was a condition to our retention. Significant difficulties encountered during the audit, there were none. As it relates to KPMG's independence, we did not perform any services other than the audits previously discussed, and we believe we are independent with respect to the county. And as previously noted, these items we will confirm in writing once we complete our single audit. And this concludes our recorded communications relating to KPMG's audit. Thank you both very much for taking your valuable time to come here tonight. We appreciate it. Madam. Okay. Uh, Legislator Haney. Opportunity for us to ask the auditors questions? Uh, if you'd like to ask the administration some questions, I'll allow it. Okay. Um, my first question is, was a management letter issued by the auditors? Through the chair, there was no management letter issued. The, they mentioned that the A133 audit is not yet com completed, um, and it isn't due until September 30th, as we know. Uh, do we anticipate that there will be any issues or deficiencies identified by the auditors in the A133 audit? Through the chair, uh, at this time, through conversations with the auditors, there, there have been no issues uh, that have come to light. Okay. The final question I, I had, you may not be able to answer. The, my question was how they determine materiality in, I mean, the county of Monroe is a big operation. It's a billion dollar business. What, what is their materiality standard that they apply when determining whether audit adjustments are needed or not? Um, through the chair, there is a methodology they go through I don't have the value amount, but they do share that with us. And uh, it's a predetermined amount based on the uh, major fund determination. Uh, through the audit, they go through the total assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses. And based on those thresholds, they, they come up uh, through a formula, a statistical formula, they determine the amount uh, and we are our audit adjustments that uh, they noted were considerably less than the uh, required amount for a material deficiency. Could, could you r roughly, through the chair, could you roughly recollect what the threshold is for, for materiality that they use? Or if not, if, if you could convey that to me in correspondence subsequently to tonight, I'd appreciate it. Through the chair, yes, we can do that. Thank you. Any further questions about the report? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, let's continue with the agenda. Referral 14-0224. Moved by Legislator Tucciarello, seconded by Legislator Quattro. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, oops, too late. Legislator Haney. Question, Mr. Chairman. Through, through the chair, are there any measurable outcomes of, of, of the work that is done with, with this money?
Through you, Mr. Chairman, Dave Marion of the District Attorney's Office. Uh, yeah, there are measurable outcomes. Uh, the switch from impact to give actually was a, was a refocus uh, of this grant initiative from a DCJS to move to a more uh, a, a more quantitative model uh, that they will be able to use. We do have reporting requirements to DCJS uh, for this grant, and there's also going to be an independent reporting uh, requirement that we have from somebody who's working within our group. Can you, in, uh, through the chair, can you enlighten us as to what s some of the outcomes have, have been from the prior year's grant? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I, at this time I'm not prepared with statistics. With uh, The prior year's grant would have been Operation Impact, uh, which completed its 10-year run. Okay. on the 30th of June. I can provide that information, but I didn't come prepared with impact materials uh, for this hearing. I apologize. Okay, because this, this is a new, I, I guess Operation Impact was terminated and this is a new grant program with, with, with new requirements, et cetera? Uh, through the chair, yes, that's correct. You, you mentioned that it's gonna require independent can't recollect the word you used, evaluation or something. Who, who, who would be doing this evaluation or what type of an entity? Through you, Mr. Chairman, I don't recall the individual's name, but he has uh, uh, been assigned to our group through the Center for Governmental Research. Oh, so so the Center for Governmental Research is doing will will be doing the evaluation uh, through the chair. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0225. by Legislator Quattro. Second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0226. Moved by Legislator Daniele. Second by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just one question through you to the administration. I, I noticed down here on this a particular referral that this year's funding represents the same amount as a previous grant award, or I'm, I'm assuming that that means a previous year, with um, the increased use of all these alternatives uh, to incarceration, is the funding that we're receiving at present enough to handle, um, I think, the cases that the county is presented with at this point? Through the chair, Bob Burns from the Office of Probation and Community Corrections. Uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, we're, our success is gauged by the uh, population of the Monroe County Jail and Correctional Facility, which is, uh, has been uh, uh, tremendously under, uh, has been sta stable for a number of years. Uh, and the number of index crimes in Monroe County, violent crimes and so on, has been uh, uh, all on positive trends. So that would be a yes. Thank you. Any further discussion, Legislator Haynes? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't recognize the name Delphi Drug and Alcohol Council. Is this a new vendor or am I just behind the times? Uh, through the chair, I believe we're on uh, 0226. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0227. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Carbone. Legislator Haney. Okay. With great anticipation. <laughs> is, <coughs> is, is Delphi a, a, a new provider, or do I just not recognize the name? Uh, through the chair, Delphi. Uh, has been in our community for several decades. It has provided uh, drug alcohol uh, treatment, domestic violence education, and a, a number of other 
services. Uh, they were the sole applicant uh, uh, based on a request for uh, proposals, and they, uh, they were awarded the contract. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0228. Moved by Legislator Carbone, seconded by Legislator Rocco. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0231. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Tucciarello. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0232. Moved by Legislator Tucciarello, seconded by Legislator Quattro. Is there any discussion? Legislator Haney. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Chairman. Just as a matter of, of related curiosity, the, whenever I've gone by the Sheriff's Marine facility down at the foot of St. Paul Street, there's always like six or eight sheriff's patrol cars parked there. What, why, it, it, is it being used for storage or why are there so many sheriff's cars down there? I, I, I'm, I was just sitting here and saying, you're really borderline there, Paul. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm gonna have to say that is out of order. That has nothing to do with the referral. Legislator Baroth. To the chair of the administration, I, I, actually to the chair, I, my apologies, I'm used to saying that one phrase all the time. Um, but the uh, referral does uh, call for uh, constructing a new garage. And so uh, there may be some relevance to maybe there's a, may, uh, a big need for cars. I don't know. But it does call for a garage in the referral. I just point that out. Yeah, I think it says replacement facility. Well, it says garage too. Yeah. I, all right. I, I may, all right, I'll go along with it. Can somebody over there answer that question? Uh, through the chair, Jason Kennedy with Engineering and Facilities Management. Um, the building uh, houses uh, throughout the various shifts approximately 20 occupants. I'm gonna presume that the vehicles uh, that are present uh, are there uh, for those employees of the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the garage in reference is not necessarily a vehicle garage. It, in, in fact, is to house uh, some of the uh, scuba equipment and gear used yeah. by the sheriff, in inclusive of a couple of uh, ATV uh, four-wheelers that are used by that unit for the services they provide. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0233. Moved by Legislator Quattro, seconded by Le Legislator Daniele, Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through, through the chair, was Health e Economics Group the lowest cost proposal? Through the chair, Tom Vasey from the Monroe County Department of Human Resources. Yes, Health Economics was the uh, cheapest cost. Okay, and, and a second question, how, how does the money flow to Health Economics to pay claims? Do we deposit money in advance with Health Economics or do they bill us after the fact based on claims? How, how, how do we reimburse health economics for, for the actual dental claims? Through the chair, we reimburse them, I believe, on a weekly basis based on actual claims submitted by health economics to Monroe County. So when they send you a bill, they've actually got claims in hand for that amount of money? Through the chair, that is correct. Thank you. Legislator Barat. Thank you. Um, through the chair of the administration, um, who currently provides these services? Through the chair, it is health economics. Oh, sorry. And thank you. Through the chair, my last question is who else submitted a uh, proposal or did anyone else submit proposals um, uh, to the referral fee? Through the chair, there was two respondents. One was Excellus and the other one was uh, health economics group. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0234. Moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Haney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question is not about the lawsuit itself, so there's no need to go into executive okay. session. 
it's about the financing of, of, of the settlement. Um, we'll, we'll be paying $75,000. The um, financial statements that were presented uh, show that the county's um, claims fund um, has a very sizable deficit in it, et, et, et cetera. My question, Mr. Chairman, is, is, is the fund capable of, of paying this $75,000 claim? Mr. Chairman, this uh, liability for this lawsuit was included in the uh, financial statements for 2013, and there is cash in that fund to make this payment. Do you, uh, through the chair, do you roughly know how much cash will be left after we pay this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, in very round numbers, approximately six million. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0235. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Carbone. Is there any discussion? Legislator Hamer. Is, is this something through the chair? Is this something new that we have to do to audit these transportation consultant agreements? I don't recall ever having approved a contract like this before. Through the chair, th this is the first uh, contract that has become, that has come before the legislature. Uh, we have not engaged in this specific audit uh, prior. The state, New York State Department of Transportation is mandating that these audits be done of transportation consultant agreements um, in order to receive final claim reimbursement from the state. Through, through the chair, is, is that a new um, requirement by the state transportation department? Through the chair, no. Uh, not until recently have they uh, pursued the requirement um, prior to this. They, they had no issues with reimbursing uh, the county. And uh, we have in the past uh, had this work uh, part of the countywide single audit uh, for federal programs. Our auditors, KPMG, would uh, look at uh, the transportation federal funding as part of their audit. So in, in effect, some of this area was covered uh, when they would look at the federal funds the county received. And I think the, the state uh, accepted that in the past, but uh, now they, they are mandating that we uh, have these what they call closeout audits uh, for each of the uh, transportation agreements relating to capital projects. So through, through the chair, the the process we've used of relying on the uh, KPMG A133 audit is no longer acceptable through New York State GOT, is that what you're saying? Through the chair, uh, that, that, that's correct. How, how many respondents, through the chair, how many respondents were there to the RFP? Through the chair, there were two. Is this the lowest cost proposal? Through the chair, through the chair, the way the request for proposal was uh, written, we were not asking for specific costs for each individual audit. Uh, they were required to submit their standard hourly rates for services and the reason why we didn't ask for a specific cost per audit is that at this time they would not know the scope of each project. So as we contract with uh, Bonadio and company, 
they will scope out the audit and, uh, and give us a price uh, per engagement. Well, through the chair, were, were the hourly rates that were quoted by Bernardino lower than the rates uh, in the other proposal? Through the chair, they were comparable uh, in each of the um, hourly rates were assigned by individual. So in some cases, Bonadio was higher and in some cases lower. Um, the staff required for this type of audit should be at the more of at the lower level rather than let's say a partner level. And the lower level costs, Bonadio was slightly um, less expensive. Okay. And final question is, in this change of procedure by, by DAT, are, are they requiring that these audits be done by certified public accountants? Through the chair, yes, an independent audit firm or, or CPA. Uh, we had asked whether an inter our own internal audit uh, can do this type of audit and their response was no. Really? You said it through you to the administration. Um, there was one other auditing firm that responded. Um, can I know who that was? Through the chair, a uh, company called Toski and Company. Thank you. And is this requirement statewide? Thank you, through the chair. Through the chair, yes. Thank you. Um, that's it. Thank you. Legislator Perot. Thank you. Um, through the chair of the administration, I just have a, one or two follow-up questions. Um, you mentioned that um, the RFP did not actually ask for a, a dollar amount uh, or cost because of uh, an inability to know what the cost would be exactly before knowing the uh, parameters of the project. My question is through the chair, given that we actually are, we're now required to provide audits for consultant agreements in excess of, you know, I believe it's $300,000, how many of those do we expect to come up, of, of those to come up in a given year? Through the chair, uh, we anticipate, and, and we refer to this in the request for proposal, that on average, we expect three to five per year. Um, and uh, the cost of these audits, uh, based on our, um, our uh, re reference to other uh, counties, this should be in the range of anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. Uh, for each one. Thank you, through the Chair of the Administration. And, uh, thank you. You anticipated my next question. I was just concerned that since it's a requirement from the state, we would have to um, have these audits performed regardless of cost ultimately. And if we're talking about worst case scenario, 5,000 times 5, we're still well within the range. So uh, no further questions. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0240. Moved by Legislator Carbone, seconded by Legislator Rocco. Uh, before Legislator Haney asks this question, I, I want to uh, make a, a little short statement here. During the lead committee, um, the chairman of the lead committee received a letter from City Hall, and it was a positive endorsement from Mayor Warren uh, in regards to this particular referral. I don't know if the minority office has that letter yet, but they certainly will be getting it. And uh, I haven't even read the letter myself, but I know it's a positive endorsement for her. And I understand that Legislator Haney does have some concerns about this, but uh, you're up, Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll eagerly await the letter. And rather than uh, delay these proceedings, I would just say that for the reasons that I cited at the Environment and Public Works Committee, I will be voting no on this proposal at this time because I don't understand uh, uh, the financial arrangement and I'm concerned that the City Pure Waters District is getting stuck for, for costs that are inappropriate. I remain prepared to be dissuaded from that opinion, but as of this time, I'm going to vote no 
and absent other evidence uh, would do so at the county legislature meeting as well. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Ms. Andrews is excused. Mr. Baroff? Aye. Dr. Carbone? Aye. Mr. Danielli? Mrs. Draw? Mr. Haney? Ms. Cayley? Aye. Dr. Quattro? Mr. Rocco? Mr. Tucciarello? Aye. Chairman Yolovich? Yes. Eight to two referral passes. Are there any other matters to come before the committee tonight? Did I miss? I missed one more? I don't think so. Why don't I have it? I don't have it. So it must be it's not on. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't have it. So go ahead and read it. Referral 14 242. We're moved by Legislator Carbone, second by Legislator Tucciarello. Is there any discussion? Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ordina in when, when the county rebuilds county highways or builds county highways, we don't ordinarily ins install curbs and sidewalks, do we? Uh, through the chair, uh, I no, we do. We do install cur curbs. Uh, we don't do in sidewalks if it's a county funded project 100% then any sidewalks would be a share of the town. If we impact sidewalks that are there then that would be something the county would pay for. But in terms of the edge treatment which could be a, just a swale, a gutter or a curb, we do install them especially in the urban, urban environments. Do, do Through the chair do we also ordinarily pay for uh, storm sewer work as part of the highway projects? Uh, through the chair, oh, most definitely. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and final question, question in, as to the sidewalks, I mean, many of these projects that have come before us, uh, the towns have picked up the cost of the sidewalks in line with the policy you outlined and reimburse the county for the cost of the sidewalks. Why is that not happening with, with this project? Uh, to the chair, this, the increased costs that we're asking for, it's, the sidewalks are not involved in it at all. And if uh, any of the impact of sidewalk on the job is being done already part of the project, but that's not why we're coming back to asking for more money for sidewalks. So then let, through the chair, let me rephrase my main question. In the, in the primary project, is the town of Greece reimbursing the county for the work, for the sidewalk work? Through the chair, I believe the only impact to any, I think they have uh, asphalt sidewalk, and the only impact, if there is impact, it would be part of the project, but the impacts are pretty minor on that particular, pro on this particular project. So the sidewalks essentially are remaining as is. I guess, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm confused. The transmittal says that this project does include side sidewalks. Are you saying it doesn't really include sidewalks? It's through, the, through the chair, as part of the referral, the project was the, the asphalt, the storm sewers, curbs, and any sidewalk work that was needed. I'm just saying it's not a big component of the project. And the only sidewalk work that is included is work that we are impacting. So there, by our project, by grades or with a culvert extension or whatever, that's why we're putting in, replacing the sidewalk. But we're not putting sidewalk throughout the whole project, no. So if there are asphalt walks, we're going to replace them with asphalt walks? Is that the idea? If we're, if they're, if we're impacting we're as part of our project, we would put it back in kind unless the town wanted something different. Okay. And that's fully in line with our established policy? Through the chair, yes, most definitely. Thank you. Legislator Baroff. Thank you. Through the chair, a somewhat unrelated question. Um, regarding the $125,000 for the unanticipated work, are, am I correct to assume that those funds are coming from the county only? Would that be correct, through the chair? 
uh, through the chair, that would be not correct. Um, it would be, we'll get 95%, we'll have uh, federal aid, 80% federal aid, 15% state aid. We Thank you. My question to the chair was whether or not they would adjust, and so apparently they will. Thanks. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Are there any other matters to come before this committee? Legislator Haney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, very shortly after the last meeting of this committee, um, we received the first quarter, the committee received the first quarter um, key indicator re report. And uh, under date of uh, July the 3rd, I requested answers to a series of about eight or 10 questions about the key indicator report to which I've not received an answer. Um, will I be receiving my question would, my initial question would be, will I be receiving a, a response to my letter of July 3rd shortly or should I ask the questions now? Through you, Mr. Chairman, um, we'll provide those to you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the July 30th, 2014 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Ways and Means Committee is Wednesday, August 20th, 2014 at 6 p.m. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.